everybody. I'm Kate Conroy. And I'm Vanessa Vitello. And this is Other People's Business, which is the podcast from the New Jersey Business and Industry Association, the largest statewide business association in the U.S. You know what, Vin? I heard recently that we actually now have 19,000 members. That is ridiculous to me. Don't you think that's ridiculous? 19,000 members. That's Ooh, great. It's crazy. <laughs> Woo! Shout out to New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance, the official sponsor of the show. They do home, auto, and workers' comp, and they're awesome. Check them out if you haven't already. So today, our guest is Kathleen Connolly from Lindaberry, McCormick, Estabrook, and Cooper. So say hello. Tell us a little about yourself. Hello, everybody. I am the greatest attorney in Mama County, <laughs> in the state of New Jersey. But uh, my practice is I do employment law. Employment. And I do it on the management side. So I make sure that uh, companies do their employees right. And I make sure that when they need to get rid of a bad employee, that they do that properly as well. And that's pretty much my gig. Well, cool. That's excellent. Okay. Um, so, Kathleen, we have an icebreaker for you this week. Um, Uh-oh. What do you think of, and we're all going to answer this, so don't feel <laughs> any pressure. What do you think of made-up holidays like Valentine's Day and St. Patrick's Day? Are you in favor, or do you think they're kind of dumb? Well, I have, a, I have a question that I need to ask you first. Oh, okay. Who made them up? Oh, um, I mean, well, I was thinking. who made who In made these them? particular cases, I think the Catholic Church made them up. I was going to say Hallmark, <laughs> maybe. I don't I would, no, I'm going with Hallmark. Yeah. Right. I'm going with Hallmark. Hallmark is responsible the, for the current uh, derivation, I think. But correct. originally... Correct. Correct. Yeah. Well, I, I think in principle, I, I actually love them. I'm kind of big really? on holidays. Oh, okay. Um, you know, my, my my girls and their friends are always like, when they come into my house, like, oh my gosh, it's so decorated. So oh. even for Valentine's Day or St. Nice. Patrick's Day, I love them. But the whole craziness of mm-hmm. the, um, for Valentine's Day, for example, having to get the gifts, having mm. to get the chocolates, yeah. having to get the roses. The pressure. It becomes, yeah, the pressure. It becomes a little ridiculous. Well, but it's one of my personal favorites. Really, because... <laughs> Because it happens to be my husband's birthday. Oh. So I give a gift, and I always get a better one back. <laughs> what could be wrong nice. with that? It's awesome. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. I Where's love it. Okay. Yeah, so it's good. Very so it's good. good. But St. Patrick's Day, a personal favorite. Yeah. Well, we're both Irish. We're both very Irish. Very Irish ladies here. From big families. Big families. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of gotten a little crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, mm. It used to be... A little bit of fun, a mm-hmm. little bit of drinking, lots of Irish food, a little bit of singing, a little bit of uh-huh. storytelling. It has now become a lot of drinking and a little bit of everything else. Right. And, you know, and some of that's kind of bad because I, I think it's, you know, sometimes I think it's reflecting a little bit. It adds to the bad stereotype. Our, uh, the bad stereotype. <laughs> Oh, and the, don't, let's not forget the fight at the end of the party. Oh, my God. Um, of course you can't forget the fight at the end of the oh, party. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, but I do love it. Mm-hmm. I, and I do take it as a chance to really keep the culture alive. Yeah. And if you think about it, as we go on, we are becoming less and less of a culture. Yeah. We're having so much in, intermingling with other cultures, which is a good thing. Yes. Nothing pun, that whole deal. Mm-hmm. But, you're, but you do begin to lose that identity that is something that yeah. I personally treasure. So I try to keep it alive on St. Patrick's Day. And I'm looking forward to it. And it's I, on Saturday this year. I know. I'm so Yay. excited. I'm Yay. so excited. Yeah, I feel exactly the same. Valentine's Day, I could kind of take early, but St. Patrick's Day, oh my gosh, it's like a month long extravaganza at my <laughs> house, I swear to God. We go to multiple concerts for the uh, Irish pub music. Uh, we go to, uh, we, it used to be like a full day long bar crawl. I was always a designated driver. I don't want anyone to think less of me for participating in oh, this bar crawl. Good? I know. <laughs> um, and it would end up at my house with a gigantic feast, uh, corned beef and cabbage. Ugh. What, sorry, Vinny? No, you keep talking. I'll, I'll get to St. Patrick's Day in a minute. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How much do we need? Yeah. I, I anticipate nothing good from you. Yeah. Um, anyway, I am a big, big, big fan, and... Um, yeah, I'm happy to be an Irish person. In fact, in my house growing up, we were told we were Irish, French, and German with an emphasis on the Irish. <laughs> well, we were Irish and German and some other things, but the German was totally hidden. Right, Our, we us were too. only Irish. Us too. <laughs> Basically, we only you talked know, about the, the Irish. That Isn't that was funny? It. That was it. Yeah. And my mom, um, you know, I'm one of 17 children. 17 children. 17 children. I thought you were kidding for a second. Not kidding. Not kidding. <laughs> we, and we have this big house God down. Bless your we mother. have a big house down in, in Mama's Beach. So as we all got older, my parents, their small family parties, although it wasn't small then, grew into everybody being able to invite whomever they wanted. So mm. we always had a St. Patrick's Day party that was north of 100 people. Wow. And this great big house. Oh, my gosh. So it was kind of like five parties within a party because <gasps> you'd have the old people in the in the front living rooms 
Mm -hmm. And then you'd have the kitchen crowd, and then you'd have what we called the playroom, which is actually an old billiard room crowd, and that's where the Irish dancing went on. And then you had the third floor crowd, <laughs> and all the crazy. I never went up to the, the third crazies. floor. crazies. <laughs> yeah, it was not. I don't want to know what they're doing up on the third it's floor. It's probably best. Probably uh, yeah, it was best to stay mm -hmm. on the third floor. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just this crazy party. So one, one day I'm in New York. It was in McSorley's when McSorley's was yes. around. And, um, no, it wasn't McSorley's. It was the one up, um, up by Radio City. Hurley's. Okay. I'm in Hurley's. And this person comes up to me and says, I think I know you. And I said, I looked at him and I said, no, I don't know you at all. He goes, no, no, you have a house down in, down the shore somewhere in, in New Jersey, right? I oh said, my yeah, gosh. my parents. He goes, yeah, I was at the craziest party ever. <laughs> oh my God. It was a St. Patrick's Day party. That's when I knew we had the right house. <laughs> nice. I was like, yeah, you got me. I, yeah, that was uh, us. So it was kind of a kind of a famous party. So it brings awesome. people together. It like, brings it people together. And the only problem was they would never then get apart. Yeah. <laughs> like like you know the, at mass because it was always on a Saturday. Of course, mm -hmm. mass next Sunday. If you stayed at our house, oh, you went to mass. You went to mass. Of course and you did. Mm -hmm. There was always that sheepish person mm -hmm. <laughs> who's now sitting at the breakfast table with like twenty five people coming in and out of church, who like, who is that? Uh huh. Because they got. Mm. Wadoed, where they couldn't go home, yep. and now here they are, hungover, sitting at the breakfast table. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. That it was pretty awesome. embarrassing. <laughs> it was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> it wasn't bad if there was somebody who knew us. It was like right. a, an extra brother or sister, but yeah, usually stranger at the table. Stranger mm. at the table. That's funny. All right, Vin. I suspect you've got a lot to say. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Lay so you wouldn't me. know it from my very Italian name, yeah. but I'm just as Irish as I am Italian because mm -hmm. my mom is 100 percent Irish, and and you look more Irish. Thank you. I, I, I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> so, I, uh, my mom treats St. Patrick's Day like it's Christmas, Hanukkah, Eid, and Kwanzaa all rolled into one. I love it is how like, you included Eid. Yeah, in <laughs> you gotta be all I don't inclusive. even know what that is. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> oh my God. so, it is the main event of all main events in our household to her and maybe to no one else. Right. And so, like, it's, it's such a thing. Like, she, um, we, uh, there was a long time there where we had to get her presents and cards, and it was like, this is not a present-giving holiday. She demanded holiday. presents? Yeah, I don't know if she demanded it or if my dad demanded that we get her stuff, but like, it was a thing for a long time. And um, <laughs> she would make the corned beef and cabbage every year. Yes. Which, in an earlier episode, I called out my mom, and for fairness, I also called out myself for being yes. a bad cook, but yes. my mom in particular was a bad cook. <laughs> Everybody would always yeah. say that she did the corned beef and cabbage really well. And I don't know if that was just patronization there or if, like, <laughs> she really did. I don't know. Because I can't stand the stuff. It's like, delicious. Uh, delicious. Something about the texture of, like, meat that just, like, strings apart. Uh, like, it's so melts good. Uh, melts, like melts, butter. Yeah, like butter. Yeah. Exactly. Ugh. It's amazing. <laughs> I'd need to put, like, 10 pounds of butter on it just to make it out of uh, but, Wait, did yeah. you know that corned beef is not actually historically Irish? I'd like to write that down somewhere and bring no, it to my correct. mom and be like, yeah. Actually, we shouldn't be eating this at all. Right. When the poor Irish got to the Lower East Side, they so found they, they found no, but they found poor Jews, and the, the, the yes. Jewish people introduced them to the corned beef, and they were like, you know what Irish people do with everything? We boil it, we boil it. So let's throw some potatoes in there, let's throw wow. some cabbage in there, and all of a sudden we've got dinner. Yes. So going back to the fake <laughs> holiday right. thing, then there is just nothing about this holiday anymore that actually is authentically Irish. Well, I mean, you said you go to the the, the music some Irish and concerts, everything, yeah. yeah. So that that actually brings the culture in. But Absolutely. Otherwise, it's just the drinking and this corned beef and cabbage. Who likes cabbage? I Honestly, love cabbage. Really? Like, yes. I love cabbage. Oh, my love, God. All right, I so I guess it. I'm in the minority on this one, but, like, I've always thought the cabbage was disgusting. I know. What is wrong with you? Even the smell. Yes. I would have to get out of the house. I remember it one year. Great. My brother and I went to McDonald's <laughs> one year, like, yes. while we were supposed to be <laughs> oh at the God. house, like, eating the St. Patrick's Day dinner. You're horrible. And when my mom found out about it, she was so upset. I just I'm, just I, I'm a terrible person. <laughs> I know this. Now. Yeah. Um, and Sweet. Valentine's Day, I guess, was the other one, right? Yes, so, yes. I don't know. I mean, as a guy, there's a lot more pressure on us yeah, to, like, you know, true. make that a big deal. Tara, some years she's really into it, and other years she's not. So it's up to me to kind of gauge what kind of year it is, you know? <laughs> well, Usually is we just wind up going to the movies. There's always something coming out that time of year that she really wants to see. Sure. So I think this year it's the last of those Fifty Shades movies I can finally uh, be uh, them. Yeah, I know, right? That's horrible. Oh, yeah. Those last two were so awful. No, I mean, the, they were badly written. Yeah. They were badly Wasn't made Wasn't it just fan movies? fiction in the first yes, place? Yes, it started yeah. out as fan fiction. Say, yeah. I didn't see it. I didn't see or read any of it, and no, I'm proud of that as well. You're good. Just Maybe. stay away. Right. But at, at the very minimum, I drag Tara to so many movies that if yeah. she gets excited about something, I try to, you know, 
I try to be there. I try not to put on the complainy face. And the way I see it, this is the last one. And then it's over. Well, so, so yeah. you think. I gotta believe that if it keeps uh, making money. I don't know if it's, uh, maybe it is. Who knows? Mm. Mm. But you know what? This is the year that, that she gave birth to your child. So I think you give her whatever she wants. <laughs> yeah, I try not to uh, <laughs> be the jerk. So yeah, anything she needs. Yeah, don't make a mistake, my friend. Be very careful. You better have a gift in the way. That's exactly <laughs> one right. one of those years and you're not quite sure, have it ready. That's exactly right. And if it doesn't happen, you can just put it away for yeah, whenever for the next, next time. Year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so earlier, you know, to get to a little business, yes. you were telling us that you're an employment law attorney. Yes. So tell us a little about that. What kind of stuff do you do? Okay, so there's so a lot of different aspects to being uh, an employment law attorney. So it can cover everything from the inception of the employment relationship and helping your client know what can they say in an interview, how do they conduct an interview. It can then move on to if you have a hire, do you need an employment contract? what needs to be in the employment contract, and then it can move on to, now I'm having discipline issues with this employee. What can I do? What can I do? How do I manage discipline mm -hmm. before I end up terminating somebody if that's where I need to go? How much do I have to pay them? So wage and hour laws. Hmm. Do I have to pay them overtime? Um, if they have a complaint about treatment in the workplace, are they complaining about unlawful behavior and being a whistleblower? So. Do I have to guide them on, hey, this person's engaged in protected activity and you need to be very careful going forward? Do I have to give them sexual harassment training like we were talking about earlier in a, in a, in a webcast today? I do a lot of um, anti-harassment training for my clients. Uh, also, I do a lot of investigations. So if you have an employee who's alleging an incident of sexual harassment, oftentimes employers are bringing out somebody from the outside to do that because it's a real skill set that you have to have. So I do a lot of investigations. I also defend my clients in um, administrative proceedings, uh, both on the state level and on the federal level, as well as in court. Just a lot. I mean, and, wow. and that's only a kind of scratch in the tip of the iceberg. But um, it's basically being there for your clients and any employment issue that can arise day in and day out. Uh, and you want to have a standing relationship with your clients, you know, kind of like you're the outs outside HR resource so that when they're in trouble, they know to pick up the phone before they make a mistake mm -hmm. and vet something with you so that they get it right on the right track. Or if they made a mistake, let's fix this the best we can mm -hmm. to kind of get you moving forward. Cool. What's the craziest thing an, uh, a client has ever called you about? Uh, I had a client, <laughs> I think I laugh thinking about it. It was a client who um, was a um, brokerage firm and they had um, an employee who Apparently, the word was she was a dancer at night. Oh boy! <laughs> and she was at, she supported the brokers and anybody who knows brokers. I mean, you know some brokers, right? Kind of a wild kind of group. It, you know, kind of a wild environment, hmm. different persona. And uh, they talked her into putting on her her show dance costume, which was <gasps> apparently it was a um, avatar costume. Do you know oh. the avatar? Oh it was my a gosh! Shiny. Body suit. See here, I I was thinking this was going to be like years ago or something. Avatar was only like nine ish years ago. Wow. Yeah, All this right. Was so a while modern ago. day. Okay. So she didn't object to it. She probably didn't object because you know she gets told a lot of money from these guys that she works at the desk for, and she was apparently, from what I understand, beautiful and had a body that went from here to there and back again. So she puts on this costume, and kind of like starts parading around the floor. Oh, well, gosh. a different desk heard about it. Mm -hmm. They couldn't see it, but they heard about it. So now they're coming over to these guys and go, we want the avatar, we want the avatar. They want her to come out and do her little number for them. Oh my gosh. Well, thankfully, somebody in HR hears about this and they're like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. What's going on here? You're not going out in that outfit. Get, get, get back in here. So they shut it down. Thank God. Oh they my got a God. protest letter from <gasps> one of the brokers saying this was consensual activity. How dare you stop us from doing what we want to do? Oh my she gosh. was cool with it. We were cool with it. It's all good and fun. This is ridiculous. And it was just, wow, really? <laughs> that is incredible. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. I, the, the avatar. The avatar costume. Yeah. We want the avatar. I'm speechless. I, I am, can't. right? I have nothing to say. Because I'm imagining. Yeah. <laughs> no, I got another good one. <laughs> you another one. Go ahead. Another Tell good me. One. This employer shared an office, shared a floor of an office building with another company. And one of their guys, two of their guys is actually in the men's room when a guy from the other company comes into the men's room. And this guy happens no to be... No good story starts yes. in the men's room. <laughs> yeah. no, nothing's good is going to come out. 
The gentleman who comes in from the other office happens to be somewhat mildly obese. So these idiots, we're going to call them, oh, no. decide that when this gentleman is in the toilet, he takes his cell phone <gasps> and puts it over the top and oh my takes gosh. a picture That's of this horrible. guy. Huh? I'm like, what are we, in seventh grade? Yes. yes. I mean, really? Horrible. Horrible. Horrible, right? Then they run out of the out of the restroom. This guy, you know, gets collects himself and tries to run after them into into their offices. He he does a quick. He stops this guy. Quick, sh switch shirts with me. They they switch shirts. So there's a little confusion as to who it was. Anyway, of course I got the call on that one because sure. then this guy is complaining to the employer saying your guys did this that and the other thing. What are we going to do about it? We ended up resolving it. But you just say. Come you can't sense. make this up. Where's coming I'm, I'm sense? coming back. You know what I'm hung up on is the switching shirts. Like, <laughs> right? like that's like the the Lois Lane to Clark Kent effect. Like I'm not going to recognize you without your glasses on. Like, wait a minute. I'm not sure. He had a purple shirt on before, but now it's green. Is that the guy that took a picture of me while I was in the bathroom? I don't know. Oh my god. Good call. Huh. That's crazy. Oh, crazy. I say a lot of funny stuff. I bet you. Uh, do. I will say it's it's interesting work. I, I'm sure. Know. Every time you think you've seen it all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you haven't. You're probably not bored. No, not usually. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to play Awful or Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Okay, we're back, and we're going to play Awful or Awesome, which faithful listeners know well. It's where I'm going to name three things, and then we each have to say whether it's awful or awesome, and then be prepared to defend your answers. Okay. Are you ready? All right. First up, the Irish goodbye. Now, does everybody know what the Irish goodbye is? So the Irish goodbye is when you leave a party or some social situation without actually saying goodbye. Yes, that's exactly yeah. right. <laughs> I am the gr the wizard at the Irish goodbye. Wow, me yeah. too. I'm like regionally famous for the Irish I, goodbye. I'm not regionally famous for it. <laughs> actually, if you're really good at it, nobody notices. <laughs> right, and, yeah, that's so, exactly right. So maybe you're not so great at oh, it. Oh, like people, people People notice after the fact is what I'm saying. Uh, like, I think he has you there. Yeah. Whatever. I'm sorry. <laughs> Kathleen, what do you think? I think it is an essential social skill yeah. that everyone absolutely must yes, have. I agree. I, I, I never forget, like, I, I, it always conjures up the images of my girls when they were little. And we would go to one of these family parties that I'm yes. talking about. There's always at least 40 people there, if not more. Yep. And so when I would say, okay, we're going to go. Okay, good, we're going, we're leaving. Because they've been ready to go for like three hours. Yes. And I go, I just have to go say goodbye. Oh, uh, me, yeah. let me go on for an hour. Exactly. Yeah, you might as well say you're leaving the moment you get in the door. Yeah. That's exactly. exactly right. Because there's always another story or, oh, we have to have a last parting glass. Parting glass. Or something Or a photo like that. or something. Or a photo or, you know. Something. Oh, I need some legal advice, Aunt Kathleen. I forgot to ask you about. <laughs> so there's always something. So I have gotten pretty good and adept that, you know, Irish doing the old Irish goodbye. I might give a general, I'm leaving. Yeah. Go. Yep. And yeah, mine out. tends to be like, I'm out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said it. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. So love the Irish goodbye. Uh, awesome. I do too. And awesome. don't feel offended if somebody pulls it on me. Yeah. That's exactly. Yeah. Exactly right. Offended. No. All right. So we're great. Okay. Next up is the Oscars. I love the Oscars. Yeah. Awesome. All right. I, like I mean, there's things about it that could use a little like fixing, but you know. Yeah. I think it runs a little long, but I love the yeah. dresses. I love the red carpet. Yeah. It's definitely flawed. I mean, they could. They could take some of that. I, I know they have those governor awards that take place Ugh. off air. They could move some of that over there. Like, I really don't Who care cares? about both sound mixing and sound editing. And, like, exactly. I, I, to this day, I don't even know what the difference between them is. But, I agree. And I'm, and I'm an AV nerd. I know, you're an AV nerd. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I, I love movies, so it's great to, you know, have a time of the year where people actually pay attention to that. Yeah. Because otherwise, you know, there's, nobody cares about this stuff all year long. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I have no shortage of people that will talk to me about the Avengers or the Justice League or anything like that. But you try to talk about the shape of water and everybody's like, wait, what was that? <laughs> so, yeah. I just said that the other day. What yeah. is that? It's got 13 Oscar nominees. I it's got to be pretty good. But yeah. I heard it was great. Yeah, it is good. Nice. Yeah. What do you think, Oscars? All right, so my choices are awful, uh, awful or awesome. awesome. Or yeah. awesome. I'm going to go with horrifying. Horrifying. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I'm taking it to a new level. Uh, okay. And I wouldn't have always said that. But I, I, I'm one of these people. I do not keep your politics to yourself. Mm -hmm. I, I, am, I do not like the fact that they've delved now into this attacking of different administrations if they don't have to be on their political Wasn't side. Wasn't that the Golden Globes, though? And they've, now they've all become like that. Okay, right. you know, <laughs> you'll see. You'll see. I'm I sure. Yeah, I, I can't imagine it won't um, happen. But And, and that, that kind of really annoys me. Mm -hmm. So I kind of turned off on it. Although I've never 
truth be told, never a, a big watcher of it. Not that I had an objection to it, but mm. I'm not going to sit there for a couple of hours and do that. Yeah, I feel like Hollywood fetting itself mm. is a little obnoxious. I'm not a big fan of award shows in general. Yes, yeah. me either. But I, I don't watch love, any of the other ones for that. No, yeah. I love the red carpet. I love mm. the dresses. I, I only pregame. I must shows. say I like the dresses. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes, like, even if, if they're bad enough, they're really good. You I know, know They're right? so bad, they're, they're, like, incredible. Sometimes like, how could you even wear that? Exactly. It's, it's so great. awful. It's awesome. It's awesome. Actually, my <laughs> favorite actor, Helena, bon <laughs> Helena Bonham Carter. Oh, she's a train wreck. Oh, always oh, comes in in these always. awesome outfits. Train. She has, she dares to be different, and that's yeah, what I love. She about. does. She yeah. does dare to be different. But they are right. <laughs> There was that year she was nominated for the King's Speech, and she also happened to have been in Alice in Wonderland that year. Yes. And she came in a very Alice in Wonderland yeah. kind of gown. I remember it. I yeah. Because it, it hit the press. Yeah. yeah. God. All right. <clears throat> uh, last one is the British royal family. I feel like you not. I have a strong opinion. I mean, I don't have enough of an opinion on them. Like, I, I'm not British. Like, it's not part of my You're day to day. Irish. I guess. Um, I don't know. Wow, my, I don't know. My dad is full on Irish, and he is still upset about the potato famine. He's never been to Europe. That was He's a never long been time ago. <laughs> Ireland. He's still upset with the British for the potato famine. Wow. I know. And you know, to be fair, there was no famine. It was just the British landowner landowners who were keeping, keeping the potatoes. It. Yeah. There, there was no famine. I don't know if you knew that. I the, didn't even know that. You, so not really? only was it a long time ago, it didn't happen at all. It didn't happen at all. We called it the famine because there was a scarcity of food, but there was a scarcity of food because the British landowners took it all and sold it at a profit because the Irish peasants uh, were just, yes. they didn't own any of the land that they were farming. And they were starving to death. They were starving and to they death. Had, they had crates full, barns full of potatoes, and the British would not give them over. And that's, that, exactly. that's what the truth is about it. Yeah. Wow. So I'm kind of like you. Um, gosh, if I if my brother, some of my brothers heard me say anything good about the royal family, I'd, I'd be bummed <laughs> out. <laughs> well, because it all goes back to the potato that's famine right. and the oppression. My dad hates it. But um, I actually, I, I don't feel it strong either way. But I, I do, because I, I'm a person who likes cultural history, mm -hmm. and I do like the fact that, at least for them, it keeps some remnants of a culture that they're losing. And mm -hmm. it's going to go away eventually. That's kind of what I was thinking. I think it's on its thinking. last legs, but at least I don't think it's going to go away. I don't know. Like, like Okay, so they have no power, right? Like, Parliament has all the power. Yes. This is kind of, you ever see that movie, The Last Emperor, with that kid yes. that yes. was, like, the last emperor right. of China? Yeah. Right, right, right. You know, and it's like, that's that's how I kind of feel. Like, you know, they're, they're just holding on to this, and they can't do anything. Yes, but they bring in a tremendous amount of money into the country because tourism. of tourism. That's right. So I don't think they're going to go away because of that. Mm -hmm. And they are essentially diplomats mm -hmm. who, who have been born into the family of diplomats. Um, so they go all over the world, and mm -hmm. they hobnob with, you know, other royal families and other prime ministers and other, mm -hmm. you know, people who are at their level or whatever. And, you know, I think that they are, um, well, I don't know. I'm not a, I guess you could say I am a huge fan, but only because, <laughs> again, the clothes. I'm a big fan of uh, <laughs> the clothes and the jewelry. The crowd is awesome. I know, it's a lot of fun to watch, you I'm know? sure you're looking forward to the wedding. <laughs> oh, my goodness, yeah. yes. They're, they're yeah. going to come out with, what is it? It's going to be like a $2 million wedding, <laughs> yeah. something like that. I have no idea. I'm sure I'm understating it. I'm sure it's going to be like a $10 billion <laughs> wedding. I can't even wait. Yeah. I'm not even going to lie to you. And then we're all going to be expected to drop what we're doing and check it out. Of like, course. Of course. Oh, it'll be, like, it'll be like, it, it, what time would it be? It'll be at some crazy hour Oh, because they have it. Something. Yeah, because of the time difference. Yeah. So yes. it'll be like 4 a.m. our time. Yes. 11 a.m. their time. We're going to have like to wear that. hats. Oh, my God. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I have hats. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right. So how can people get a hold? Let, let's just say Kate and I are in the office and we coax somebody into getting into an avatar suit and doing <laughs> something a little crazy. How could we get a hold of you to, to get your services? <laughs> yeah. You can either do it the old-fashioned way by way of a telephone call. Can you believe you can actually talk to people? It's no. amazing. Yes. There's this device. You dial numbers. You can actually hear somebody on the other end. Like in it's real so time? awesome. <laughs> in real time. It's crazy. <laughs> so in order to do that, you get this device that's called a, a phone, a cell uh -huh. phone, and you dial 908-233-6800. Or you can do it the old-fashioned way, and you can email me at k. Oh, God, that's the old-fashioned way. At lindaberry .com. <laughs> k Connolly. K Sorry, I interrupted that. <laughs> it's k c o n n e l l y at linda l i n d a berry b u r y dot com. 
Wonderful. Cool. Perfect. So that's our show. I think that's our show. So please, if you're listening to this on iTunes, we would love a five-star review. If you're listening to this on any other platform, we'd appreciate it if you jumped over to iTunes and gave us a five-star review anyway. The more of that kind of stuff we get, the more iTunes pushes it out to more of you. And the more we can do this show. That's exactly right. Thank you to our subscribers and listeners. We really appreciate the support. Thank you to Kathleen Connolly of Linda Bray McCormick, Estabrook and Cooper. And you know who else thank you to? NJM Insurance NJM Group. NJM Insurance Group. For sponsoring this show. <laughs> That's right. They do home, yes. auto, and workers comp. So check them out. Yep. And start practicing those Irish songs. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. Quick. That's right. Next time we have you on, we'll sing. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <a date>. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.